is that we're going to look at what's the difference between the word verify and the word proof. So far, we've done proofs. So you've got a sense of what prove means. We draw the line. We try to make the left side equal to the right side. The word verify is very similar, except you're only checking it for one value. So when you have a question like in part A, it says verify that the identity for theta equals 30 degrees. They just want you to check that it's true when the angle is 30 degrees. So what does that mean? You still set up your line. You can still label this is my left side and this is my right side. And we plug in 30 degrees for all of the angles. So on the left side in part A, you'll have secant of 30 degrees times by 1 plus cos of 30 degrees. This is on page 607. And on the right side, you have 1 plus secant of 30 degrees. So now this is a unit circle question. Those values are on your pie plate. Secant of 30 degrees is equal to what? Well, you'd have to think cos of 30 degrees. Maybe we should do that first. What's cos of 30 degrees? Root 3 over 2. And if cos of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, what's secant of 30 degrees? 2 over root 3, the reciprocal. So we can plug in those values and figure them out. On the right side, we're going to have 1 plus 2 over root 3. Now, on first glance, is the left side equal to the right side? Well, I'm not sure. If it was a calculator question, you could plug it all into your calculator and check if the decimals were the same. But if it's a non-calculator question, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to simplify this and make sure the fractions are the same on both sides. How do we simplify something like this? Okay. Well, on both, well, we here we could distribute, right? And so if you distribute, what are you going to get? Well, 2 over root 3 times 1 will just be 2 over root 3. And what happens when you multiply 2 over root 3 times root 3 over 2? The 2's would cancel, the root 3's would cancel, and you would just get plus 1. Are they the same? Yes. So now we can say the left side is equal to the right side, all that fancy stuff. Nice. That's what verifying looks like. What does proving look like? Well, proving, yeah, we'll prove this one, and then we'll do verification and everything on the second one together. So we want to prove that secant theta times 1 plus cos theta is equal to 1 plus secant theta. And what's nice about a proof is if you're able to prove it, it means that it works for every single angle. The verification, we just showed 30 degrees works. But if you do the proof, you're saying it works for 30 degrees, for 35 degrees, for 38 degrees, for 17 pi over 11 radians, whatever you want. The proof is very powerful, whereas the verification just does one value. So what can we change? What could we do? Suggestions. What's that? Change. We can change secant to cos. You want to do that on both sides or just one side? Okay. A good strategy, right? Because now everything, everything is in cos. But the sides aren't completely the same yet. What else could we do? We could distribute this one over cos. And we get one over cos. And how do we multiply one over cos times cos? They'll cancel out, and you'll just get one. Are they the same now? Uh, 
and we're done. So it's a little bit of a puzzle. You do something, you rearrange things, and you keep rearranging the sides until the two sides are identical, and then you've done the proof. Let's look at part B. First of all, it wants to verify. If we're verifying for 30 degrees, and sometimes verifying is actually harder than the proof. But if we are verifying this for 30 degrees, what? Our left side and our right side plug in 30 degrees, 1 minus tan of 30 degrees. And here we'd have cotangent of 30 degrees minus 1 over cotangent of 30 degrees. What is tan of 30 degrees? root 3 over 3. So what's cotangent of 30 degrees? 3 over root 3 minus 1 over 3 over root 3. And we need to get them the same. Now, a strategy that's going to come up in verification questions and a strategy that's going to come up in proofs is something that we saw at the very front of this chapter when we had to simplify fractions. A fraction or an operation of fractions is simplified if you can write it as a single fraction. Can you see on the left side we don't have a single fraction yet? And on the right side we have fractions inside of fractions. And so if we can get both sides to be a single fraction, Often, that'll be enough to show that they're the same. So on the left side, how do I put those together to get a single fraction? I need a common denominator, and then I could add. So where the 1, which is right now 1 over 1, if I multiply top and bottom by 3, I would get a common denominator. And on the left side, I could get a single fraction. It'll be 3 minus root 3 over 3. On the right side, I've got, I don't have a single fraction on the top yet. Can you see that it's all over, it's 3 over root 3 minus 1. This would be over 1. If I wanted to get a common denominator, I'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by root 3. And then I would get 3 minus root 3 all over root 3 on the top of my fraction and still have 3 over root 3 on the bottom of my fraction. Why did I want to do that? Because if I have a fraction divided by a fraction, what can I do? How do I divide fractions? Multiply by the reciprocal. So this is what I had on the top, I multiply by the reciprocal. Anything that's adding or subtracting, that's going to get grouped together. Can you see anything that can simplify? The root 3's will simplify. And we got this side as a single fraction. Are they the same? Yes. So what's often going to happen is if you use your fraction skills and get a single fraction on the left side and a single fraction on the right side, when you're done that, you're going to look and probably comes out to about 90% of the time, things are going to be the same. The extra 10% of the time, we'll look at those ones too. That's coming up. Those are harder. But 90% of the time, you get a fraction equal to fraction and you're done. So that's the verification. If we want to prove this, draw your line. What can you do? 
you can change the cotangent to 10. Now, what's really nice about that strategy, okay, because you could also change the cotangent to cos over sine, right? The nice thing about changing the cotangent to 10 is can you see that now we have the same trig functions on both sides? So we have a better chance of things equaling out if you're dealing with the same things on both sides. That's why some people really like the strategy of changing everything to sine and cos because then they know that everything will work out. And in this one, if you changed everything to sine and cos, you could prove this as well. But we're going to start by changing things to 10. Can you see that on the left you have a single fraction? Because on the left you could just call this over 1 and it's a single fraction. But on the right, we could do some work to simplify. We could get a common denominator on the top to get a single fraction on the top. How do we do that? Well, this is over 1 to get a common denominator, common denominator would be 10. And so on the top you would get 1 minus 10 all over 10. And you would still have the fraction of 1 over 10 on the bottom. Now a couple of things for formatting. You're going to have lots of fractions inside fractions, and if you make your notes really tight together, you might forget where one fraction starts and another one ends. And you might forget half of your proof halfway through, and then you end up having to make stuff up to see if it works, and as soon as you make stuff up in math, it usually ends badly. So a couple of things for formatting. You always want what you write on your next line to equal what was above. I like to leave, you see how much I sort of left an extra bit of space in there? I'm going to erase those lines because I don't like them. I'll use a highlighter. There. See I left some space in between so that I could know that this part here was equal to this here. If you end up being too crunched together, it's hard to tell where one thing ends and another thing begins. Another thing I like to do is whatever is my main divide line. You see, that's my main divide line. When you get fractions inside of fractions, I always like to make that line a little bit longer, just so that I know that that was my main divide line. Kind of helps me visualize that, oh yeah, this is what was on top, and this is what was on the bottom. Because I'll show you an example um, just off to the side here. Don't write this down. But let's say you had tan of theta divided by sine of theta. And tan is sine over cos, so then you write sine over cos over sine. Which is, if you draw it, draw it all with the same lines like that, you might think sine was on the top and cos over sine was on the bottom. Right? But if you make this line longer, you're like, oh yeah, it was sine over cos that was on the top and the sign was on the bottom. So just little things to help you stay organized, to help you keep track of things. Now we have a single fraction on the top, and a single fraction on the bottom, and a fraction divided by a fraction can multiply by the reciprocal. So I will have 1 minus tan theta over tan theta multiplied by the reciprocal tan theta over 1. This gets grouped together as one term. Do we have anything that's the same? Sure enough, those are the same, so they can simplify. And we're left with 1 minus tan theta. Is that identical to what we had to begin with? It is. So the left side. Is equal to the right side. Okay, I'd like you to do 3, 5, 6, and 7, I, I. And we're going to take some time to do those now.
about what? About yeah. Um, Do you want me to go up yeah, or back? Can you go up a little bit? Um, oh yeah. So when you're at like this stop, mm -hmm. then one, two, three, four, and then to the left, and then one. Yeah, minus one. Um, and then I wanted to put these, because this is two fractions, together as a single fraction. How do I subtract fractions? I need a common denominator. My question is, is that you, why would you just divide each one individually by this? Dangerous doing that. In like You can multiply by the reciprocal and distribute, but you're going to find that you're going to make less mistakes. Like more of like a safety, a safety kind of thing. Like there are there are mathematical asking. ways of doing it, but that's what I, I was asking because yeah, because you're dividing by a fraction, so you can multiply the reciprocal. What happens to some students who do that without getting single fractions is sometimes they have this on the bottom, I see. and they just flip this one, but not the one, and then that oh. doesn't work whatsoever. I see. So that's what I was asking because like on the surface it seems like it'd be easier to do that. And like you make less mistakes. But this will work out better for you in the long run. Yes? Okay. 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 Okay, thank you. this I'll know that sometimes the work day ends differently but not on early dismissal days so what's that I am still recording I've been recording for the last this is a wonderful video did I swear at anyone no I don't think so okay Whew.